well as a Static X album, but we won't be reviewing that today. Um, this is also my very first attempt at ASMR, so we will see how it goes. There's a section of the preface or the, the author's introduction. know that none of the pictures were snapshots, that their deepest purpose was more religious than secular, and that commercial photography, as practiced in the 1890s, was not so much a form of applied technology as it was a semi-magical act that symbolically dealt with time and mortality. Knowing this, you should understand that there was a direct link between photography and the presence of such epidemic diseases as diphtheria, smallpox, and cholera. These diseases were awful and perverse, not only because they paralyzed and destroyed whole countries, but because they inverted a natural order. That is, they killed the youngest before the oldest. They killed the ones who were to be protected before their rightful protectors. They killed the progeny Such diseases created circumstances of fate so grotesque, so perverse, that they permitted parents to outlive their infants. They permitted them to live on not only in grief, but in guilt, since it was they who had failed to preserve their bloodline. It was they who had failed to maintain the immortality of their genes. You should know a second thing before you read the accounts. These writings transformed what were private acts into public events. In a time that was disjointed by a depression as epidemically fatal and grotesque as the most contagious disease, these articles created temporary but intimate bonds between creatures who had been separated and divided by a selfish culture of secular Calvinism. These accounts permitted people to share their misery by turning strangers into relatives. They attributed and articulated the motives of the most secret and private of undertakings, the act of suicide, and so permitted desperate people to be solaced by others' despair. These accounts turned grief inside out. They turned murderous sorrow outward toward the eyes of a crowd that could not only comfort it, but, by participating in it, could be immunized against it. Such weekly articles and notices 
practices served a purpose is similar to those of commercial photography. They were symbolic ways of dealing with an inhuman fate that made some men helpless by making them suddenly and inexplicably poor, and that drove some women mad with grief and remorse by quickly killing their children. This book is an exercise in historical actuality, but it has only as much to do with history as the heat and spectrum of the light that makes it visible, or the retina and optical nerve of your eye. as much an exercise of history as it is an experiment of alchemy. Its primary intention is to make you experience the pages now before you as a flexible mirror that, if turned one way, can reflect the odor of the air that surrounded me as I wrote this. If turned another, can project your anticipations of next Monday. If turned again, can transmit the sound of breathing in the deep winter air of a room of 80 years ago, and if turned once again, this time backward on itself, can fuse all three images, and so can focus who I once was, what you might yet be, and what may have happened, all upon a single point of your imagination, and transform them like light focused by a lens on paper, from a lower form of energy to a higher.
is afraid of injury being done to him. Relations say he has tried to hang himself. September 29, 1896. Discharged. Improved. Readmitted May 4th, 1898. Delusion that he and his family are to be hanged or destroyed. Mendota State.
disclosure, greeted her in a perfunctorily kind manner and offered her a chair, which she took gratefully. She sat for a quarter of an hour, almost without moving. At length, she rose and went out on the walk, carrying the baby. She walked up and down the street, desolately homeless. She did not know what to do with herself. She knew no one except the grocer. She grew bitter as she saw a couple of ladies pass, holding their demi-trains in the latest city fashion. Another woman went by pushing a baby carriage on which sat a child just about as big as her own. It was bouncing itself up and down on the long slender springs and laughing and shouting. Its clean, round face glowed from its pretty, fringed hood. She looked down at the dusty clothes and grimy face of her own little one and walked on silently. The closer was familiar with these bedraggled and weary wives. I wonder if it's bedraggled or bedraggled. I think it may be bedraggled, but I've always said it is bedraggled because I think that's funny. He was accustomed to see them sit for hours in his big wooden chair and nurse tired and fretful children. Their forlorn, aimless, and pathetic wandering up and down the street was a daily occurrence and had never possessed any special meaning to him. Hamlet Garland, a day's pleasure in Maine traveled routes. Pages 176 to 78. Charles Gregory of Sheboygan Falls, while jumping on a moving freight, was run over. The top of his head was taken off and his brain strewn on the track. July 5th, State News. Miss Eddie McCoy of Elroy, Juneau County, wife of a conductor, John McCoy, who was killed in a railway accident, has received a thousand dollars and a one thousand mile ticket company. July 5th, State News. W.B. Porter, a Black River Falls druggist and general merchandiser, died in his home at the age of 56 from, quote, an overdose of morphine taken Sunday night to allay the nervousness from which he had been suffering, end quote. July 26th, Town News. The 60-year-old wife of a farmer in Jackson, Washington County, killed herself by cutting her throat with a sheep shears. August 3rd, State News. A new horse, recently purchased in Chicago by the residents of this city, arrived here last Saturday night, August 10th, Town News. In H. Young of York went, quote, too loyal, and brought home a bottle of whiskey which he put up in the house near a bottle of carbolic acid which had been there for some time. He arose in the night, drank about four ounces at one swallow, and lived about four minutes. August 10th, County. Milo L. Nichols sent to the insane hospital a year or two ago after committing arson on Mrs. Nichols' farm is now at large and was seen near the old place early last week. He's proven himself a revengeful firebug. August 31st, County. Now, I will say, I'm readjusting again. I am just full of aches and pains, let me tell you what. This book um, describes most uh, arsonists as firebugs, and I don't know what it is about but it really just tickles me pink. I think it is so funny. Um, the first time I read this book, I got such a kick out of it. Every time I saw it, I didn't even really understand what they were referring to by firebug at first. My brain wasn't picking up on it. For the first couple times I 
Schuster, a woman who had worked in Best's butcher shop, was found frozen by the roadside near Albion, six miles from Black River Falls. She and her husband had separated, he living in town, she living alone in the house. Although no one had noticed that she had been suffering from any physical or mental disorder, quote, two years ago, the loss of a child is said to have affected her very deeply and may have led to the becoming partially demented. The probability is that she rose in a fit of delirium and wandered away. December 4th, Town It is reported that a house owned by Adolf Walmer, situated one half mile south of Tessa's Corners in the town of Muskego, Waukesha County, is haunted. It is perfectly quiet around the house, around the house, until the dread hour of night approaches when it is suddenly illuminated. Distinct sounds of footsteps are heard pacing the floors, and doors swing to and fro, yet no object is perceptible. This scene is one of very short duration, lasting one or two minutes only, and is repeated several times during the early morning hours. Sounds like my house. February 5th, 1886. Our citizens were shocked last Friday to learn that Amos Cotchell of Sparta, who had formerly resided in this vicinity, had committed suicide by shooting himself with a revolver in Mr. Potts' harness shop at Sparta. Mr. Cotchell was one of the most enterprising farmers and exemplary citizens when he resided here, and it is singular that he should thus take his own life, but I presume it is best that we not judge harshly. March 5th. dose of morphine, which resulted in his death around 12 o'clock that evening. The deceased left a note saying that no one but himself was to blame for the act. He leaves a wife and four little girls in destitute circumstances. He was a sober and industrious workman, quite well known and generally respected. April 2nd, Town. An electric machine at the corner of Main and Mason Streets attracted considerable citizens be required to use unusual care in the disposition of garbage and slops, that all pigsties in the thickly sown portion of the city be declared nuisances, and that none be allowed, except they maintain a floor and it be cleaned twice a week during the summer, that privies be thoroughly disinfected, and that slaughterhouses be not permitted to run the blood on the ground and let the hogs creak as much filth as before. May 7th. excitement, attacked her children recently and wrecked the furniture and windows in her house. May 7th, State. The dead body of an unknown suicide was found hanging a few days ago to a tree near Potsoy, Grant County. The body was supposed to have been that of a railway workman. May 7th, State. <laughs> Tramps are overrunning Grant County, raiding sheep and stealing horses. The farmers are organizing a vigilance committee. May 7th, State. Five hundred. 
spite against a neighbor and mailed her a letter of the filthiest description. May 14th State Tuesday last, a cider, a man about 35 years of age and bachelor who resides in Morrison's Creek, was found wandering in the streets of the city in an insane condition. July 17th. This is F. Oates of Shamwam, Illinois, writes, When I had used Dr. Pierce's favorite prescription one week, I could walk all over the dooryard and I could get into a wagon and ride two miles to see my neighbors. I had not been able to walk out in the dooryard for six months. Six months. After using a quote-unquote favorite prescription, two weeks, I rode in a wagon ten miles. My neighbors were surprised to see me up and going about and helping to do my housework after doctoring with three, thirteen of the best physicians we could get. And the last and the last one told my husband that I would never be able to do my housework anymore. I am thankful to my God that I wrote to you, for I had suffered from quote unquote female weakness until I had almost given up in despair. October tenth. old man feared and despised doctors and read all of the patent medicine advertisements in the newspapers, believing for a moment each flowery promise of an end of pain. He received many pamphlets by mail, testimonies of miraculous healing, illustrated by photographs of ugly men and women who had been sufferers and wrote for salves, powders, and tonics. His wife sighed and shook her head whenever an agent drove into the yard with a valise full of samples. But the old man invariably described his symptoms. The ambitious salesman invariably expressed his sympathy, gave advice, and received a large order. Every druggist in the neighboring towns also prepared for him personal recipes. Glenway Westcott, from his novel The Grandmothers, page 33. All of the men of the White Cross, a newly organized temperance society, have promised, quote, by the help of God to treat all women with respect and endeavor to protect them from wrong and degradation, to endeavor to put down all indecent language and coarse jests, to maintain the law of purity as equally binding upon men and women, to endeavor to spread these principles among my companions and help younger brothers, to use every possible means to fulfill the command, keep thyself pure. October 29th, National Difference News. There seems to be an organized body of incendiaries in Clark County, judging from the numerous barn fires that have lately occurred in that locality. November 26th, State. This is the last one for this section. Monday, a man from near Fairchild came here to get Dr. Cole to help him out of a bad fix. It seems that while masticating a piece of tough beef steak, his artificial teeth of the lower jaw became misplaced and were swallowed plate and all. They lodged, though, in the lower part of the throat and refused to go down or come up. It was a full set. The doctor was unable to extract them, so he put them down. December 31st, down. I won't read too much more of it because I do recommend that you go and read the book yourself because it is an excellent book. Um, if you're into that kind of a thing, you know, it's, again, with the bit that I mentioned at the introduction, um, but the author talking about the subjectivity of war, uh, history, I almost said war, the subjectivity of history as opposed to the objectivity it kind of creates an interesting I don't know, spin on the way that we look at historical events because, you know, we never really think of, say, a third party was to relay an event that happened in your life to multiple people that you know and yourself. It happened to yourself and other people that you know. To your third party who was not involved, describe an event that happened to you and this said group of people that you know. To hear a flattened two-dimensional version of that story would be a little jarring because then you would want to chime in and put in your two cents in the way that you interpreted the event.
just thought that was a bit interesting because as with most people and that's most likely through the portrayal of um, older bygone eras in the media they're very serious very um, kind of straightforward no nonsense so now whenever I think about you know days gone by events that happened so long ago that no one who experienced them are even living. It's interesting to remember that there were people who experienced these things not just as a flat, singular event, but through their own biases, through their own personalities, through the eyes of the individual. So it's very interesting to like to be the people experiencing these events, um, which is something that I've always thought about, um, but never really had a way to put it into words until I read that in this book. Um, I would say that probably in 
ASMR reading. I've always been a huge fan of ASMR, so I've always wanted to take a stab at it. I hope the sound is okay if I'm just recording. 